Hello everyone, I bring warm greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's an honor and a privilege to be addressing Kingdom Search 2021 through this platform. I want to begin by stating that today we have created a false dichotomy between the sacred and the secular. Many of us believe that people who are engaged in full-time ministry like pastors, theologians, and missionaries are those who serve God and the rest of us in secular jobs are serving the world. This is a wrong understanding. Every born-again Christian who has committed their lives to Christ are all workers in God's kingdom through various professions. There is also a slight misunderstanding of the concept of Christian calling today. Some of us believe that people who are into secular jobs are those who haven't heard the calling of God. This is again very misleading. First and foremost, we are called to someone, not to some place or to something. Once again, we are called to someone, not to some place or to somewhere. Our primary calling as followers of Christ is by Him, to him and for him. Our secondary calling is that everyone, everywhere and in everything should think, should speak, live and act entirely for him. So we can say that since we have responded to God's call to Christ, we are called for motherhood, for teaching or preaching or entrepreneurship or administration. In this learned shop on government, let me quickly share three principles. Number one, if you are a Christian who have responded to God's call and are now serving the Lord in various capacities in the government sector, I believe that first of all, we need to adopt the leadership model that was taught by Jesus, which is called servant leadership. Jesus deconstructed the whole notion of leadership and said, a leader is someone who is the servant of all. In Mark chapter 10 verse 43, Jesus said, whoever wants to be great must serve others. Today, the world defines greatness in terms of power, prestige, position. Jesus defined uh, greatness in terms of service, not, uh, not, not status or salary. When we are a servant leader, we don't ask how many people are serving me, but we rather ask how many people am I serving. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7 says, Jesus emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant. Secondly, as government servants, we need to put on the apron of integrity. We need to be honest, truthful, and accountable to God as well as to the people we have been called to serve and lead. We will face many pressures, temptations, frustrations, and even ridicule, but as long as we are rooted in God's word, we will be able to weather all storms in life. All throughout my career as a government servant, I've always prayed to God, telling Him not to put me in a situation where I will forget His love. Finally, as government servants in a decaying society, we are called to be the salt and light of the world. In the ancient world, salt was a very valuable item used in preservation, in seasoning of food, healing of wounds, etc. Today, we are living in a society where there is a gradual decay of morality and truth. Like salt, we are called to prevent this decay and preserve the culture and society around us through our identity with Christ. Let's be reminded that the world continues to suffer not because of the violence of bad people but because of the silence of good people. As the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, we are not simply to bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice but we are to drive a spoke into the will itself. Let's live our lives in such a way that one day when we stand in front of our Savior, He will bat our shoulders and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you.